Hey, how's it going? And welcome to episode two of the Duo Group Iron Man series. Make sure you check out episode one if you haven't already. And remember, my teammate's YouTube channel will be linked in every video description so you can check out the other perspective of the progress. We just got to the teak trees and we left off working on 50 fire making so we can start Winter Toad. We have a decent stack of cakes in the bank that we thieved and we should be all set to head on over there once we finish up getting 50 fire making. Huge milestone coming in, that is 200 total level. Another random event should be our first piece of the camo outfit. Whoa, do you see that? There's just like a floating axe and a floating ghost peak amulet. <laughs> And finally, there is 50 fire making. We are now officially over halfway to 99. It feels like this took so long to do, but in the grand scheme of things, it really didn't. Before we head over to Zaya, I just want to see if maybe the feathers aren't completely out of stock, like every other early game item tends to be. Because if we can buy some feathers here, at least we get like a little bit of fletching XP out of this. Oh yeah, wait, there's feather packs. I have never been this happy about the existence of feather packs before now. And now we begin the long trek, but that's okay. We got some fletching XP to gain in the meantime. Now, why are we going to everyone's favorite boss? I know it's very stereotypical, but I mean, people do it for a reason. You get a lot of good resources, and more importantly, you get a lot of good starting cash. I haven't decided how long I want to stay here for, whether we're going to go to like 80 to 85 fire making, or if we're going to go all the way to 99. It really doesn't matter if we wait till later to go to 99 with higher hit points, because if you have a bank, like you just grab your food out the bank after every run. Now, if you're playing a UIM, it's a lot different. That's really the only time I think you got to worry about having low hit points, but I haven't done this boss for almost two and a half years now since I first made the UIM, and I'm just looking forward to grinding it out. I mean, we'll see how I feel after being here for a couple dozen hours, but right now at least I'm excited to get at it. I don't know how much food we're going to need each run. I mean, it'll start with like, I don't know, six or something, but we have plenty of cakes. I actually don't think this is enough to get us to 99, so at some point we'll probably have to make another trip to Artie to get more cakes. Uh, generally, you want to have four pieces of warm clothing, but I only have two here. According to the guide, it says that if you're at 10 hit points, then it doesn't even matter about having warm clothing if you're at 56 fire making, but we have two pieces now, so we shouldn't be taking more than one or two damage, I think. And then as for the axe, steel through dragon is pretty much the same thing. It's only if you have a bronze or iron that makes it a lot worse. There's the starting stats that we're going to have before we begin the boss, so take a good look at them now. And with that said, let's begin the... Winter Toad. Here's the list of official Toad worlds. I honestly thought that they would all be full, but maybe it's because it's day one, so maybe a lot of people haven't made it to this point yet, but give it a couple days, I really feel like these are gonna just be completely full. Oh, what a great name. All right, let's, let's begin. Oh wait, I almost forgot the most important thing. We're gonna switch this to off. Now we're good to go. Okay, nice. See, so we only take one damage at a time. Oh man, first KC of Toad done. Uh, what's that? We got the, Oh yeah, I forgot about the combat tasks. First KC done, no food used, and oh my god, this XP is just so much faster and so much nicer than chopping teaks and burning them. Let's see if we get lucky from the first crate. Thanks, game. All right, I'll probably check in with either Uniques or every five levels. I probably don't even have to open the crates, actually, after every round. If I didn't even have to use any food, maybe I'll just open them, like, every few rounds or something. Yo, new title for a video, though. Your subdued winter toad count is one. No, not yet. We'll save it. We'll save it for a better boss. And that is 55 fire making. And I thought about it and realized that we don't have the pyromancer set, which we get from the crates, and that gives an XP boost. So I probably should open the crates one at a time, at least until we have the full set. So we'll open we'll open the crates here and see if we uh Alright, dude. <laughs> see if we get any Thing. Cool. By the way, the warm gloves are not part of the pyro set, so they don't give any bonus fire making XP, but they do count as warm clothing, which I mean doesn't matter because I have 10 hit points, but yeah. There's 60 fire making. Oh, nice. The pyro garb. Very cool. Uh, that is a piece of warm clothing and 0.8% XP boost for fire making. 65 fire making. Yo, what the hell? They added Shrek into the game? And there is 70 fire making. Is this worth a clip? Uh, we hit 1 million total XP. I was holding on to a bunch of crates as I was eating dinner, so let's see if we can get anything good, any uniques, anything new from any of these crates. 
No. Oh, I got, I, we just got the third warm gloves. If you have three pairs of warm gloves already and you roll them again, you won't get another pair and instead you'll get a magic seed. Um, and then with the torches, if you end up getting three Bruma torches and you still have them on you, then instead of getting a fourth one, you would instead get a torsal seed. 75. See, she's here somewhere. You can see the, the green dot there. We kind of thought for a bit about doing solos or duos, but the more I thought about, the more I remembered when I was trying to solo on my UIM, and that was when there wasn't a new game mode that was based around making a bunch of accounts. I got crashed all the time. So I could only imagine now trying to solo or duo or small team at Toad, it would be awful. I could only imagine you would just be constantly crashed. So I think doing that's just completely out of the question. Although if we turn on Entity Hider and I have Hide Friends off and Hide Local Player off, and it looks like it's just us here now. Oh, hey, that must be the magic seed from having the three warm gloves. Oh, genie lamp. Oh, wait, we can't use it on Herb. We haven't done a Druidic ritual. Ah, uh, I don't know. Construction, I guess. Yes, we've got something, the pyro hood. I feel like it's been a while. Yeah. And the hood gives a 0.4% fire making XP boost. I keep telling myself, just one more game before bed, just one more game, or Casey, or whatever you want to call it. But I gotta cut it off at some point, and this is gonna be the cutoff point right after this round right here. Uh, this is gonna be 91 KC. I know it's not 100 KC, but uh, I know this is episode two for you, but for me, this is the end of the first day of Group Iron Man. Um, it's 2 a.m. here, and it started at 3 a.m. yesterday, so Group Iron Man's almost been out for 24 hours. Although we kind of started a few hours late because we were in bed already. I do want to try to stick with daily videos at the start though, but if I'm only doing fire making the whole time, I can't really do daily videos, especially if I wanted to go for 99, which I think I do want to go for 99, but um, we're gonna have to like split it up. Maybe like every day is gonna be half fire making and then half like running around questing. We're gonna go to bed now and then tomorrow when I wake up, we'll probably uh, get back on the questing grind. Only thing that's annoying is that we don't have games necklaces, so it is a bit of a run to get back here. Wait, there's no mini game teleport here, is there? I don't know why I'm asking that and checking because I already know the answer. It's just late, okay. One more thing I want to show this time played here. Um, granted, I probably did spend like an hour maybe on Tutorial Island the day before Group Iron Man. I'm sorry I've been slacking though, like can you imagine not playing 25 hours of Group Iron Man on the first day, SMH. Oh boy, I'm sorry I slept so long, I won't let it happen again sir. We're gonna do a few more hours of fire making this morning and then we'll get into some questing. Oh. Oh, we just got 80 fire making. Oh no, I was just talking about the Group Iron Man helms with uh, my bud. And he said it looks like a chess piece, and then I just realized it does look like a knight, and now I can't unsee it. Another magic seed, thank you warm gloves. I still keep going and going, and I keep telling myself just one more game, just one more game, but I swear just uh, one more level. Once we get 83, then we'll start questing. And in just a second, when the game ends, that is 83 fire making. We are going to move on for now, but like I said before, we'll probably just come back every day for a few hours. And when I say a few, I mean like 10 hours, <laughs> probably been playing like 15 plus hours a day. And now I'm really curious, how much GP do we have uh, in total that we've collected from 129 Toad games plus a little bit from before we have? over 200k. This wasn't on purpose, but the Osiris Guide actually recommended uh, moving on once you have 200k GP, but we're not moving on forever, we're gonna come back. Let's go home and do one of the most difficult quests in the game. I feel so rich, I can just buy whatever I want. Yo, is that already camo piece number two? What the heck? Where'd my legs go? You ever seen a floating torso before? I can't figure out which of those jokes I should use, so I'm gonna just leave them both in, thank you. Oh, hey, look, it's all of my YouTube series. Here we have the Hardcore Iron Man, and then we have the UIM and now we have the group Iron Man. You see how I'm getting like two of everything here? That's because I'm a good teammate trying to help my partner out with a very challenging quest. She can share her own wool though, I ain't doing all that. Now because of how tough this quest is, I do need some help. Okay, sorry, I made that joke like three times now. Uh, there's this plugin that I've been wanting to get for a long time uh, in the plugin hub on Runelite called Quest Helper, I think it is. Yeah, Quest Helper. I've seen so many people use it in their YouTube videos and it just like guides you on what to do. It's like having the wiki built into the game. I need a lot of help. I need I need the game to play itself for me pretty much. We're gonna start this uh, quest here and then finish it at the same time. Start the quest, yes. 
Whoa, it just opened by itself. Oh, thank God I had this quest helper to help me out. I would have no idea what to do otherwise. And there we go, Cook's assistant is done. Level five Cook and Alabat. I guess I haven't shown this yet in the videos, but there's a thing called group storage and it's just like a shared bank between all the members of the team. So if I put stuff in here, then your teammates can also access this from any bank in the game, so. Look at me being a very helpful teammate. Huge quest completion coming in here from level one all the way to three crafting. Okay, that auto opening thing is kind of annoying. So I'm going into the settings and there's an option for auto open sidebar. So I'm getting rid of that. Mistle and mystery is complete. 600 crafting XP and some gems. And that puts us up to seven crafting. Before we have access to a bunch of law runes and even just before we could use Varrock teleport, we can trade Diango for the Chronicle, which costs 300 GP. And then the teleport cards cost 150 GP each, so we'll buy a few of those, put them in the book, and this will teleport us to the Champion's Guild anytime, which is uh, pretty close to Varrock. So this teleport's gonna come in really handy before we get Varrock teleports. Just doing this step for Dwarf Cannon while we're here, and now we're gonna head over to Varrock and do some quests and other stuff around that area. Gonna make a very important upgrade here, gonna buy a Oh, yeah, I, I should have expected that. Man, I really want to get a six hour log on this account already, but it's not going to happen if I have to keep hopping worlds to buy items. Anyway, Staff of Fire because we're probably going to be casting a lot of Fire Strike. And Gertrude's Cat is done, and we get some cooking XP, putting us at 13 cooking. And we get Death Runes. I mean, we get a cat that we can uh, use to help for uh, future quests later on that we're going to need, of course. Oh, and the chocolate cake. We need that for a quest later on, uh, Tale of Two Cats. It seems like when there's items that I need that are free to play, it's a lot easier to get them in a free to play world just because there's like less competition there. You can see there's like under 100 people in the free to play worlds versus like 500 plus people in the members worlds. We are gonna buy a bunch of runes here. Well, just spent a bunch of money down to a 150k cash stack, but we are set for runes at least. And we should be getting a piece of the zombie outfit. And then Varrock Museum is done. We're gonna get level nine Slayer and level nine Hunter. Romeo and Juliet is done. We got five quest points. Remember how I talked about minigames teleports being especially useful in the early game? Well, right now I wanna to go to Edgeville. So what we can do is use the Soul Wars minigames teleport and we can walk into the portal right here and we are now in Edgeville. Oh, wait, I, for I forgot about the skeletons being like, we need to start the uh, Abyss mini quest here with this guy. Can we? Okay, we're good. I'm so oblivious to all these things that can kill me in the game because I'm so used to being on a high level character. I don't know if it's the best idea to be getting hit points XP right now, but at the same time, I do want to get uh, level 13 magic for fire strike. So I think I will just go ahead and do this. I mean, if we get a few levels, we probably won't even get one level, but even if we do get a few levels, it really shouldn't make a difference anyways. So I'm just going to save spot the barbarians here. Oh, well, it's a really good thing we didn't make hardcore accounts because we would have just lost a life right now. The HP pure has been ruined 11 hit points. And we are finishing off 13 magic by safe spotting this bear for the meat that we need for Druidic Ritual. And now we can use Fire Strike and this spell changes everything. Fire Strike actually goes hard though, considering how low the requirement is. Oh, we are about to head through the iconic gate that was full of mystery to me as a child. So we can talk to Cake Mix and go do Druidic Ritual so we can unlock Herblore. We have unlocked a new skill and it's not warding, it's Herblore. There's a combat task to like use one of the potions at Winter Toad, so now we can do that. We still haven't decided who's gonna do which of the skills. I mean, I'm probably gonna end up doing construction because I'll be more of the PVMer, so it would help me more to have my own maxed house. I feel like early on we kind of both have to train all these skills up like for Song of the Elves we're both gonna need 70 herb lore so I feel like it wouldn't necessarily make sense to funnel all the supplies to one person at the start at least until we both have like all the quests done or something and then once we start getting more into like the mid game section I feel like then it makes sense to start specializing more and more once we drink out of the cauldron that is which is potion done, we get a little bit of magic XP. You need level 10 cooking for red berry pies, and we have 13, so there's a decent chance we're gonna burn both of them. <gasps> we got one, please two, no. See, I'm a good teammate, I care. Red berry pie number two, yes. And the cooking level. We have to mine two blurite. There's one that we need for the quest, and then one more that we need for the diary. I think even if you're being attacked, it still counts as mining, right? Does it? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. 
Easy game, now we can go to Faldor. I think this will be the last quest that we're gonna do for today, and then we're gonna go back to the Toad, because after this in the guide, it recommends all these combat quests, like Fight Arena and Waterfall Quest and all that. So after this quest, we're gonna end the video, because next video, I wanna get ready to go back to the Toad. Let's give the sword to the Squire, and we just got a massive smithing XP boost. 12.7k XP, putting us at 29 smithing. We're wrapping up today's video with 345 total level, 83 fire making, and 23 quest points. And don't forget to check out Spook Dog's videos. The link will be in every video description. And uh, it's just so fun playing this account. It's just, I love the feeling of building up from scratch. I know a lot of people don't like playing early game Iron Man stuff, but me personally, I really enjoy that feeling. And I hope you're enjoying watching the progress as well. And I'm so excited still to see where the account goes. But with that said, I hope you have a great day and I will see you again tomorrow.